with the possibility of a Crash game releasing in 2019, be it a reboot or sequel, today me and a special guest have decided to bring some ideas to the table on what we think the next installment to the series could be like, and please note that we are not speaking for the community by any means, and we don't even consider ourselves to be a part of the community just because of how divided it is, but regardless, let me give you my piece. New Characters Give us new characters or expand on the lore of the Bandicoot species like Crash 2010 was going to do with the baby Bandicoots. Purely based on the concept art, it seems that Cortex was going to be experimenting on animals again, particularly the Bandicoot species, which is reminiscent of the first game since Cortex was doing the same thing with Crash before he escaped. One of the other things I was thinking of was creating weapons from objects that enemies dropped like the Frog Zooka, which was incredibly creative for the series and seeing as Aku Aku wasn't really going to guide Crash along these times around, just based on the screenshots of the gameplay, it would have made for a more immersive experience since your hand wasn't going to be held like in its predecessors. I would love to see something like this in the next installment. And yes, Crash Bandicoot 2010 was a sequel to Monitor Mutant, and it was made by the same team that made Crash of the Titans in Monitor Mutant. So seeing as this game was cancelled, and people wanting it and crying over it by the same people that they bashed is a little ironic. We need an open world Crash Bandicoot game. We're all familiar with the hallway gameplay, but personally, I'm tired of that shit. It's stale and we all know how it goes. We only had two Crash games that gave us space, Twin Sanity and Mind Over Mutant. That's not even half of the series, since every other game was just trying to be like the Naughty Dog titles. An open world crash game with side missions and other challenges would give the game more replay value, though it depends on how it's done because execution is a huge factor. But enough about my little rambling, here's my friend. The Insane Trilogy was a fun revival of the past, but if Crash is going to continue forward as successfully as we all want him to, then he needs to make a lasting impact with something memorable. We've seen a return of action platformers lately, all of which offer new experiences that lean heavily on pre-existing proven formats. The big exception I'd say being Mario Odyssey, which took a huge risk with its format. In my opinion, there should be no middle ground here. If Crash can't come back and hang with Mario, then he should stay dead. But to hang with Mario, Crash needs to make a lasting impact with a new, potentially risky concept, while also staying faithful and true to his past for longtime fans. And this is how I think you do that. Now I'm fantasy booking here to an extent of course, my method of creating a lasting impact is quite involved and would require severe coordination in the marketing department for a future title which honestly is not something I think any publisher can commit themselves to in the modern industry, but we'll get to that in good time. For starters, I'm going to expect nothing less than the same amount of overall content in last year's remake to also appear in a new Crash game. Anything less just won't cut it. We're also back to the warp room format. I'm thinking more Crash 2 style, 5, maybe 6 stages to each level of the warp room, which only has maybe 4 or 5 tiers. Now I know that sounds like a short game, but bear with me. Also, none of this spoiling who the next boss fight is going to be like we saw in Warped either. Keep that shit a secret until the fight loads and give Crash's history some love. I'm not going all out to pick boss characters, but give us a different lineup than we've seen previously with some familiar faces alongside a few new ones. However, I will say we need a different primary antagonist. I'm thinking maybe Brio. Say he's stolen Uka Uka from Cortex and is using his evil to power new inventions or something. I don't know, just anyone other than Cortex. But the main topic of discussion here is level structure. We can't just rely on that hallway platforming we're used to. It's still there of course, but I think Crash should also be looking to some other types of platforming level design to be mixed in. Maybe some split paths with multiple exits, somewhat similar to the Ratchet and Clank formula. I like to picture a cliff level where one path takes you along the crumbling edge towards a crystal, while the other takes you up above that same path to the rickety rope bridge overhead across to a mini boss of some description. Maybe a strong enemy in the form of a titan like a spike or scorporilla. There is no reason a new game can't embrace the past in this simple manner. You love twin sanity ripping on Wrath of Cortex, how is beating up on some leftover mutants still roaming the land any different? Along with this, maybe one in every eight or ten levels could be much more open like Spyro, Mario or Banjo. These would be the levels to feature heavy amounts 
amounts of side objectives and majority of the vehicles. You can do a single lap, get your primary collectible and leave, or you can hang out and collect everything, perform all the tasks and earn gems on vehicles. With these three traditional playstyles all coming together in a single game, we get a familiar feel that we all love that also appeals beyond Crash's standalone reach. First time through, you never know what you're going to uncover, and with the addition of Crash, Coco, and maybe even Crunch, all as playable characters, this could open up even more playstyles suited to each area. Crash having a distance jump in the tornado spin, Coco with a double jump, and Crunch with the ability to break through walls or certain hazards to gain access into some new areas, the mostly linear game starts to get that open feel. I'm not talking about going crazy with any of this stuff, but some variation in decision making to the gameplay would really give Crash's format an added level of depth. All of what I've mentioned would be cool, of course, all of it perfect for the marketing of the game, which brings me to my main point. We don't get any surprises in games anymore. All of the revamped cutscenes in the Insane Trilogy were spoiled through the marketing for the game, along with Twits Online desperately baiting for clicks. Just imagine, all of the marketing around these additions, a different final boss, but a game that only has as much content as a single classic Crash game. You know what that would spawn online? Mixed feelings. As many people stoked for all the new additions versus all the people bitching. Ooh, it has less levels, it's not good enough, and half of them are open with vehicles? Hell shit. Despite finding myself in the middle of plenty of these toxic wars in the past and deeply despising them, a good advertiser knows how to use that to their advantage to make even more money. Despite our opinions leading up to release, we all buy the game anyway because we're all suckers and hypocrites. We play through all I've just mentioned and as we step onto the final platform in the center of the final warp room and descend up to the final boss, we come out into the blinding light. The warp room was underground this entire time. Time. We face off against Brio as the final boss, and as we kick his ass and win, nothing happens. Brio goes away, and the music cuts, and we're just left here, outside and finally free. We move Crash forward, descending towards a distant village down the way through linear gameplay, still without music, leaving us kind of confused, and then once we reach our destination, we learn that we've been tricked. That was only Act 1 of the game. Imagine if the marketing was focused purely on the beginning of the game, the shock and impact that moment would leave on players forever when you thought you'd beaten the game just to learn you were only getting started. It's like if Insanity Island had a few more hours of content into Insanity, imagine how shocked you'd be first time playing through to learn that there are other locations to visit if that all been kept a secret. From here, the game would transform more so into that semi-linear, semi-open world to insanity format as we continue on our adventure because not only is Brio not finished, but he himself is not the final boss. It was a ruse all along. Cortex and Brio tricked Crash to get him right where they want him, for their superior to finish him off. Could be Tropy, could be Uka Uka or someone totally new, though I wouldn't risk that. It doesn't matter. There is no need for specific, insignificant details here. Including Crash's famous level design primarily at the start of the game, and later on as you may find the odd single tier warp room elsewhere throughout the world, gives longtime fans what they know, but in addition with these other level formats that a larger majority are also familiar with, it helps to mix things up and keep the game fresh, providing a wider reach on the nostalgic gameplay styles. Where I think this concept breaks the mold, is its marketing and shock value. In the same way kids were shocked to learn the appearance of Ganon in the original Legend of Zelda decades ago, this kind of shock moment of realization that this game just totally flipped itself upside down and you're far from done, basically saying to the player, you think you know what's up, but you're just my bitch, is a huge shock moment that people will remember forever if the marketing didn't spoil it. That kind of major game moment is the impact a new Crash game needs to make so that it doesn't feel like the same old thing we've seen before, but also with enough familiarity that doesn't lead it to feel totally out there and different. It's a long shot, it's certainly a fantasy, but I'd say, if Crash can't make a huge impact like that on his return, then he shouldn't return in the first place.
obviously Crash now, there's so much interest in Crash and, uh, you know, remastered people will get to relive those games, which is great. Do you think, you know, from your end, the character of Crash and the type of gameplay, is there room, do you think, for new Crash games? I mean, is that the kind of thing, like, the, you know, the concept of it? I mean, the gameplay in, in Uncharted 4 and even now, it's like it still, it still holds up. Um, do you guys think, I mean, would you like to see Crash sort of continue forward? New game? What, would that, what kind of games do you think that could be? I mean, Crash is his own character. He goes off and does whatever he wants to do. I think it's great that there's this nostalgia period where we're bringing it back, that 20 years ago is when I think a lot of people want to play with their kids now that played it when they were younger or want to play with their kids, remember the first game, so I think that's fantastic. There is a very good question whether or not Crash is a character that after the nostalgia of doing the games we've already made, do you take the character and do something new do something more contemporary that speaks to this generation of gamer. And I don't know. That would be a challenge. Right. Because again, we kind of left Crash thinking that he was PS1. Yeah. It was way too early for nostalgia, but it was also for us a little too late for that character to move into the world that Jack took up, much, I think, much better, and then eventually the Uncharted world that needed a more adult character, needed real world. It wouldn't have worked with cartoony characters to do Uncharted. It wouldn't wouldn't have had the same impact. I, I don't know if you go back and take a character from PlayStation and can make them relevant beyond the nostalgia. So that remains to be seen.